Um, for those of you that I've not met before, uh, a very brief uh, synopsis. Green Energy UK is a small independent green electricity supplier. We are an electricity retailer, we're not a generator. So we buy electricity as a commodity on a commodity market and we sell it through the national grid to homes and businesses with a conscience. So people who want to make some kind of difference regarding um, whether they whether they see it as an issue of clean air, whether they see it as an issue of global warming, whether they see it as carbon emissions, or whether they just see it as common sense, I don't know. Uh, but the issue is that there are people out there who want to be green for whatever reason they've chosen. Uh, we started this business in 2001, following a chance conversation at a one-year-old's birthday party. I met a guy who was doing his PhD in photovoltaic physics. I had no idea what photovoltaic physics were at the time, so I asked him to speak in English, because I thought it was my first language. And when he explained that photovoltaics was English, but it was something to do with physics, I thought this could be a very tricky conversation. When he told me he was talking about solar energy, I said, oh, now I know what you're talking about. Um, but it's no good for us, because we don't get enough sunshine. And he said, no, we don't deal with sunshine, we deal with light. We turn the light into electricity. I said, I don't believe you, prove it to me. So we chatted for two or three hours, and I came away fascinated, um, and decided that that's what I wanted to spend the next few years doing. I discovered that solar energy was a philanthropist's dream. <coughs> if you're a millionaire philanthropist, you could get involved in solar energy in 2000, 2001. If you weren't a millionaire, you would find it somewhat more difficult. Uh, all of the research that we carried out suggested that solar would take 10 years to get to market and to be economic and commercially viable. And here we are in 2011. The FIT regime was introduced last year. And what do you know? Solar is suddenly back on the agenda. Uh, I think Mr. Hume is rather concerned about the scale of some of the solar installations that people are applying for, and is concerned about uh, whether there's sufficient money to go round. I'm not sure he understands how the system works, but we'll come back to that in a minute. Um, but certainly the FIT regime has raised people's awareness of solar energy and its commercial viability. Um, so I went away having spoken to this bloke about factual types and thought, right, if I cannot do solar energy, what can I do that will keep me in that market and keep the wolf from the door? Pay me a living. Uh, so we formed an electricity company. Um, we're one of three electricity companies that supply green energy into the market in the UK, or certainly green businesses that supply electricity into the market. All the big six do have green tariffs, um, but uh, there are three into small independents that, that dedicate themselves to the green energy marketplace. We buy electricity at one end of the system and we sell it at the other, and we rent the infrastructure in between. But we're no different to British Gas, EDF, Empower, Eon, whoever you want to mention, because they don't own the national grid. The national grid company owns the national grid, and they don't necessarily own the distribution network in the local area that they operate in. So we all pay to use the system to get our electricity from a generator to a customer. It's important to note that we don't sell green electrons. What we do is we buy green electricity at this end, and we invoice customers at this end. But the customers will get a homogenous electricity product. Yeah? Electrons are like water. They go to the nearest point of relief. So the electricity generated over here is likely to be consumed over here, even if I've got consumers over there. The issue is that we, as a business, are responsible for putting into the system as much as we take out. We all take electricity for granted. When we turn the switch on, we expect the lights to come on. That's because people like me meet that obligation. That doesn't make me very worthy, it doesn't make me very, um, very clever. It just means that I'm financially incentivised to do so, or rather, I'm financially incentivised not to not do it. Uh, there are huge financial penalties if we don't put enough in, uh, because we operate not only on a commodity market when we're out there buying our electricity, but this system in the middle has a balancing and settlement system within it. And therefore, if you around this table are going to use 100 units of electricity this week, I have to put 100 units of electricity into the system. If I don't, somebody says, you're short. And at which point, I have to buy electricity. And I've heard you that have seen me talk before will know that I've always wanted to 
sell something that starts with that. Because when you haven't got enough of something and you're out there having to buy it, the price starts with a, well, that's going to cost you. Yeah? Whereas if you have too much of it, let's say I, take, I buy 120 and you guys only take out 100, I'm left with the 20. And I, try, I put that into the market and they go, it's not really worth anything. Really. Yeah? So I'm incentivized to get it right. <clears throat> not only because I don't want to pay the extortionate prices I would have to pay on system buy if I'm short for a period, but equally I don't really want to spill electricity into the market that I pay good pr a good price for for less than I paid for it. So there are commercial and financial incentives on all suppliers to make sure that they put in what they take out and they take out what they put in. One of the issues with that big system we've talked about decentralised energy production uh, or sorry, centralised energy production is that in order to create electricity in the Midlands where historically we had lots and lots of coal and distribute it all around the country is quite expensive in terms of the losses that the system takes out so just passing electricity down the wires costs us electricity, costs us money and we have to put in around about 10% more than you take out as consumers just to make up for what we call transmission losses. If you want an analogy, it's a bit like if you've got a truck and it's going to take goods from a farmer to the supermarket, yeah, he's going to get tyre wear, engine wear, brake wear, all of those things. Yeah, It ain't transported for free, albeit it goes into the back of the truck and gets there there is a cost associated with the transportation. And the transmission losses are a bit like the frictional losses that you get from brakes and tyres. Just using it wears it out. So, so we have to put it in. The other thing about the electricity market is it's very dynamic and it work and it, we have to settle every half hour. So it's a half hourly marketplace. So there are 48 periods in which we have to put electricity into the system. It's balanced and then we get a bit at the end of it. Okay. So, very dynamic market. We have got little generators, that are big generators, little generators. We buy very effectively from small scale generators. So, if we want to look, does that, is that tell you about green energy? Does that give you a flavour? Have you got any questions about what we do, why we do it, or the type of business that we are? Yeah? Okay. Yeah, one thing I didn't know, we do give shares in our business to our customers. It's a philanthropic thing, that's an ethical thing, it's a transparency thing. It's fairly, it's unique. Um, and we did it because we wanted to incentivise people who were prepared to do the right thing. Or what I consider to be the right thing. I might be wrong. Climate, global warming might not even be happening. But on the balance of probabilities, I think it probably is. So, we, where do we buy our energy from? We buy our energy from a lot of micro generators. So, uh, we buy from farmers, we buy from individuals we buy from companies who have gone into electricity production for a number of reasons. If we just take the commercial aspect of it for, to start with, um, if you look at, I'll, I'll just give you some examples. We've got a pig farmer, we've got a skip operator, we've got a waste oil operator, we've got a tomato, a couple of tomato growers, we've got a cow farmer. The pig farmer uses anaerobic digestion. The pig farmer got into electricity production because he had waste and he needed to dispose of it. And he needed to dispose of it more effectively. Um, the skip operator got into electricity production because he had skips that were going to landfill. Landfill tax was increasing. It was going to be increasingly in competitive marketplace. And he was looking for a smarter way of disposing of the waste he collected in these skips than putting it in a hole in the ground and paying the tax. Not only that, but we will run out in, therefore, it was a good long-term solution. Uh, we've got tomato growers. They grow tomatoes under glass. They grow cucumbers under glass. They, we've got people who grow peppers under glass. Green peppers, that's green peppers. So these guys have a demand for heat to help their plants grow. I don't know how much uh, science you guys have done, but photosynthesis is the process by which uh, plants take carbon out of the atmosphere by breathing in CO2 and breathing out oxygen. So they, they got that carbon in. Now, if you enrich a greenhouse with CO2,